Welcome to the, our second of our Off the Mask discussions. This time, uh, I am so excited to be joined by several of the people behind the scenes who have really contributed so much to our, our Off the Mask fashion show, our designers and our stylists. So uh, we're thrilled to be joined by uh, Lauren France of Lauren Elizabeth Design, uh, Salon, excuse me, which will be doing the hair and makeup for, or the hair for our show. We have uh, Peggy Gray from 22 Shades of Gray, one of our incredible fashion designers. Who's, this is actually Peggy's uh, third year with us contributing to Off the Mask. And we have Maura Marks uh, of Maura Marks Handmade, who uh, is going to be joining us this year and contributing some of her fashions. And in a little bit, we'll also be joined by Loki Anthony, who's one of our designers and uh, all around great person. So welcome everybody and, and thank you so much for including your talents in this event. Uh, I'm gonna start with Lauren who, who's uh, joining us by the car and somewhat a time, you know, uh, under a time crunch. So Lauren, thank you so much. And, and you know, I really uh, enjoyed reading your website because as someone, as you can see, who's a bit uh, follically challenged, uh, let's just say, I really, uh, I understand <laughs> how hair can impact your self-esteem. So I really appreciate reading on your website that you're dedicated to helping your clients feel confident. Can you discuss that, discuss why that's important to you and you feel your role in helping people feel confident? Um, yeah, so I've been in, hey everybody, I'm Lauren with Lauren Elizabeth Salon and I've been in the hair industry for 11 years. I opened up my salon three years ago and one of the things was when I worked at my other salon, um, not everyone like was into uh, making people really feel good about themselves. You could see it was like half and half. And then when I wanted to go off on my own, having that feeling to make people feel really good about themselves, um, leaving our doors is literally like it could bring tears to my eyes. There's so many people who are going through tough times, not even just through the pandemic and whatnot, even prior to that, like even for instance, like one of my clients, she had said how rude her boss is to her, makes her feel awful, talks down to her. And like just being able to make them feel good, even just by doing their hair, doing their makeup, doing a custom spray tan is, is literally makes my heart explode with love. Um, so that's why I think um, in this industry, it's either you have to love what you are doing or you need to get out of it because this is, you, everyone sees your hair and your makeup first. And when you, when you feel and look good, you shine. Oh, that's so true. And, and, and we're so, so uh, grateful to have uh, you and your talents and, and help our models uh, shine on the big day, September 10th at, at 60 State Street in Albany. I hope everyone joins us. And, you know, why did you decide to participate in Off the Mask, Warren, and help raise uh, mental health awareness? Um, because I just think that it's very, very, very important. Um, obviously, even with me and stuff, um, some people just, they don't take care of themselves or they take other uh, like roles in their lives and they just, um, they just kind of forget about themselves. And I just truly believe believing and like taking care of yourself brings such good mental awareness to like yourself and making yourself feel good and not depressed and not down on yourself. Um, that's why I like really love doing what I do. Um, and that's why I love being a part of this. And I would love to contribute and donate even more than what I've already been doing. Well, thank you. So, and we say it all the time. It's kind of an extension of that philosophy that you can't have physical health without mental health. And I think a lot of the ways, the way people see themselves is how they end up, uh, you know, seeing themselves mentally as well. And we're about to, I think uh, Loki's coming in to join us. Um, well, thank you so much, Lauren, both uh, for sharing your thoughts with us and, and contributing to the fashion show. And people can visit uh, Lauren. Um, she has her website, laurenelizabethsalon.com. You can also visit her the salon in Albany at 1830 Western Avenue or in Troy at 501 Campbell Avenue. So uh, thank you so much, Lauren, and, and welcome, Loki. Great to have you here. Uh, thank you so much. Sorry for the thank delay. you. Uh, Hi, thank Lauren. You. Hi. So, so next Hi, up, we're going to talk to Peggy Gray of, of 22 Shades of Gray. Hi, Peggy. And, you know, um, 
Right. One of the things that uh, about you in 22 Shades of Grey that I really love is that, that you strive for fashions for women of all shit sizes and all ages. And I think one of the unique things about Off the Mask is that we have models of all sizes and certainly of all ages, literally from a baby to people who just put it politely will say are quite far removed from being a baby. But why is it so important to you to design fashions for all types of women? Well, um, I have a background in the fashion industry for many, many years. And I've seen so much of the cookie cutter styles that they create. And if you look around, people, especially women, are not cookie cutter shapes. They're all different sizes and heights. And so it's very hard once you get over, if you're size two, four, six, you don't have so many issues. Um, with finding something that really looks good on you is the right um, age style for you. Um, but as you get a little bit more mature, it gets harder. It gets a lot harder to get things that fit right, that are, you know, have the right age appropriateness for them, um, that are stylish. And so my, I've always made my own clothing because I couldn't find things that I really liked in the marketplace that fit me. Fit means so much in how a garment looks on people. If a garment, I don't care how good the garment's made, how beautiful the garment is on the hanger, if it doesn't fit the person, it does not flatter them at all. And so, um, and there's not a big market for women who, you know, once, once you reach a certain age and you've had children, um, there's not really a big market for, for that out there. So I, in sewing for myself and designing for myself, that's how I created my, you know, my philosophy of, of having all women in all shapes and sizes and ages feel good about what they're wearing. Uh, it's so important. Even as a man, I know, you know, someone who's, you know, a, a bigger guy, it can be so frustrating when you go to the store and you see something that you like and it doesn't fit you right. It's actually very demoralizing. So yeah. it, it's really, a, it impacts your mental health too. I you know I've yeah. walked away from Absolutely. many stores where it can ruin your day. So I, I really appreciate that. But what I appreciate the most about you, of course, is that you've been so supportive of this event from the beginning. This is your third year participating in Off the Mask, and we're, and we're so grateful for all that you've contributed. But I'm just curious, what are some of the things that you have learned from the event and from our models? Well, uh, I've made many friends from of the models. They're great. I just love working with them. Um, and as much as as you look around and see, but it's easy to see body styles and how different and how many different shapes there are. It's a little, it's a lot more difficult with mental illness to see that. So in working with the models, I've realized and the, and the whole group is, you know, NAMI in general, um, I've realized how many different uh, types and phases of mental illness there are. There's that you can't fit them into a box. And it's really expanded my understanding of mental illness, which is what NAMI is about, of course, and trying to get the word out. And so in dealing with the models personally, on a personal level, you know, I've realized the extent of how it impacts their lives in some respects. Um, and when they, put on a garment that I've made and, and I, uh, I really want the models to pick out the garments that they feel good in. I'm not going to send them down the aisle in something that just because I want to show it in the fashion show that they don't feel proud of themselves walking down the aisle. But when they come and then we do a fitting and they put the style on and they look in the mirror and they have this great big smile on their face, it's the least I can do to help, you know, in, put some joy in their lives, even for just a moment, you know? And when I see them walking down the aisle, some of them are so into this. They just are in their glory walking down the aisle and being the center of attention and doing something that makes them feel good. So really the fashion show is, is 
really does a lot to help help them get some joy into their their lives that they might have trouble finding in other places. No, it's so true. It's such an empowering and transformative experience uh, for so many of the models, and you can see it. The yeah. looks on their faces it, it radiates. Mm -hmm. So again, you can see this for for yourself by joining us on September 10th at, at 60 State Place. Um, and more information can be found on our website, namiNYS.org, and you can click on the off the mask tag tab. And you can learn more about Peggy and, and 22 Shades of Gray at her website, 22, the number 22 shadesofgray.com. Um, you can also visit her on Facebook at 22 Shades of Gray. And uh, you can visit her at her studio, 22 Morris Road in Buzzkirk, New York. So thank you so much, Peggy, for everything that you've done for the event and for joining us today. Thank you. Of course. So now we're going to turn our attention to Mara Marks of, of Mara Marks Homemade. Hi, Mara. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I think you're wearing one of your fashions today, yes? I am. Such a, a good representative of your work. And, and I, I really have to say, I, I enjoyed visiting your website so much and seeing your work in a, a lot of ways. It was really cool. It's like going to a museum and seeing like a great abstract exhibit, geometric exhibit, and, and pop art, which I really like. I mean, I'm no fashion expert, but your clothes are definitely something I would enjoy wearing. And and can you kind of explain your vision for your designs? Sure. Well, I think it's important um, to have a couple pieces in your closet that you're excited to put on that make you feel good and that, you know, are just a little fun and maybe something like a conversation starter when you go out. Um, I really like bright colors and, um, I just, you know, when I, when I see something that is bright and it reminds me of, you know, going on vacation, those are like, those are the fabrics that I'm drawn to. And I want to share that with people. And I also want to, you know, maybe evoke memories of visiting your grandmother when you were a kid or something like that. Because a lot of my materials are bed linens from the 70s and 80s. And a lot of times I ha I'll have a shirt up in, on my website or at a market or something and people comment that they recognize that print from a family member back when they were a kid or something like that and that's really fun for me and I think um, you know if I was working with solid colors I would get bored pretty quick so I gotta keep it interesting <laughs> yeah well it's definitely interesting and, and I love it it looks like a you know, to me, like even the shirt that you're wearing, I can see as being like a, an album cover, like a old vinyl album cover. I really <laughs> like that. But yeah, and you touched on it. The other thing that I absolutely love about your designs is that you use vintage repurposed uh, materials and dead stock fabrics and, and old sheets and things like that. I mean, as an environmentalist, I love it because I always believe in the three R's of recycle, reuse and reduce. But I think in looking at off the mass, there's really a double symbolism there. I mean. Um, you use fabrics and stuff that have been discarded and, and you find beauty in things that maybe a lot of other people would overlook. And as someone who lives with a mental illness myself, I think a lot of people in our community are too often discarded and our unique perspectives and abilities and beauty can be overlooked by many. So seeing your real work really hit home for me. I, I really appreciate it. Can, can you explain why you choose to highlight what others may disregard? Yeah, so I grew up in rural Vermont where we didn't go shopping very often. I rarely had anything new. I wore a lot of hand-me-downs uh, from my sister or a neighbor. And I really um, started to enjoy, you know, digging through those bags of hand-me-downs or going to a thrift store or like a white elephant sale at, at a church in, in the town because we were... <laughs> way out of town and uh you know that surprise when you find that one really cool piece that you know it wasn't for somebody but it's definitely for me and i really enjoy um searching for that needle in a haystack and i i also find that the older um you know vintage fabrics vintage materials are really high quality generally. Um, it's a lot easier to find something that's really nice to work with uh, versus the new fabrics that you'll find in like a Joanne fabrics or something like that. Uh, and, and also I really 
am drawn to the patterns and designs um, of, you know, earlier vintage, um, you know, the, the graphics that they use, the, the printing and the designing, I think it, it's so, I don't know, it's hard to find really new stuff nowadays that um, I'm attracted to. And I think maybe other people feel similar, but uh, it, I find it's a lot easier to, to search vintage stuff and find like really cool patterns, so. Yeah, and, uh, and also the pattern, along with the patterns, which I think are so cool. And like I said, I was just very drawn to that looking at your website. I think we were kind of talking about it before. I think it's so important, you know, memories. And, and we were talking about the Star yeah. Wars shirt that I really liked and how that was actually someone's old sheets that, that they turned into a, a shirt. And, and mm -hmm. you know, those memories are so important, the connections that we have with objects. And you talked about maybe seeing things that you remember at your grandmother's house and that's especially, you know, Kit Mihard, next tomorrow my grandfather would have been his 100th birthday and you see things in memories and I still have like stuff of his that I wouldn't wear but I keep in my closet because of the memory. So to have, you know, have that really be a part of you and, and wear it, I think it's so important. I just love what you're doing and thank you for sharing your perspective and, and sharing your talents with this uh, for the event coming up. And if you wanna learn more about Mara and her work, you can visit uh, Mara Marks, that's M-A-R-C-K-S dot com or at Instagram also at Mara Marks. So thank you so much, Mara. Thank you. Thanks, of course. And now we're going to be talking to Loki Anthony, who really uh, is a, in many ways contributing a lot of his talents to the event. He's uh, a, a real renaissance man. We'll get to that in a second. And uh, I was really so impressed learning about Loki and, and all his work and uh, you're both not only a renaissance man, but are really an agent for positive change as you use your incredible talents as a professional artist, designer, and barber to help others. So can you kind of talk about your, your mission and your work, um, Loki, and, and really your motto, which I love more than anything, which is love is key. That, that, that's so true. So how does that all play out in your work? I think you're on mute, Loki. There we go. Hi, everyone. There, we go. there he is. Thank you, Matthew, for having me. I also want to just give a shout out to the other designers. You guys are amazing. And I'm so glad I got to be a part of this interview and learn more about you guys. Um, I think I relate a lot to Maura and Peggy um, in the way that I approach fashion. I'm a wearable art designer. That's what I consider myself more than anything. I transform clothing with art. So it was a journey that started back in high school with um, similar to Mora, um, not always being able to keep up with the trends. Um, first day of school was like one of the worst days of school for me um, growing up and not because I was treated poorly, but because I just couldn't show up every year with brand new clothes like a lot of my friends. So instead of letting that get to me after a while, I decided to start creating style. Um, and at the time, it was easier to create artwork on the clothing than it was for me to create the clothing. So I kind of morphed my, my fashion more from, from that, that standpoint. Um, and it, it taught me something in that process to actually believe more in personal style than in following trends because as I got better at it, um, I started having classmates want their, their clothing hooked up too. So eventually that's what kind of created this business for me was personal style, um, having some confidence in my own personal style. And also uh, on the environmental side, using things that are already here and transforming them versus running out and trying to buy something brand new all the time. So it started really early on with what I was doing, um, and it's just it's just been the, the guidepost for me. Um, the love is key thing is on the level of mental illness. For me, I think what got me through a lot of uh, ups and downs in life was that I was raised to see how love has a power. It's not just a word. It's not just a holiday thing. It really has a power that transforms the way you see the world around you and the people around you. So love is key actually has to do with understanding 
that we all have different, but at the end of the day, we're all human. Um, and if you don't take a second to understand someone's background, you may never understand why you have these differences. So approach them with love and understanding around that. And it's the key to us really connecting better. So I felt like that, um, trying to put it in a nutshell, what love is key is, um, and it actually has gotten more love, no pun intended, it's gotten more love than my other work because I think there's something in the spirit of it that people connect to that I don't have to promote. So that was something I really enjoyed about getting that off the ground. And I promote it at every show. I want people who work with me to know that this is about love first. It's fashion second, it's love first. Um, but yeah, I just really feel like that's what this is about. Yeah, and it, now more than ever, it's so important as we're in these challenging times that we all you know, treat each other with love and respect and help each other get through what's really been a bumpy road. And I see you're wearing one of the Love is Key hats right there, which uh, I know I need to get myself one of those. And one of the other things that you said was so important, we talked about it a lot last week when we had a discussion with some of the models that so many people like compare themselves to other people and the road that somebody else is on, you know, they want to be yeah, on that road too. But everyone has to carve their own road. And, and that's really what you're doing with your fashions, you know, not comparing it. And, and then, you know, your road becomes so unique that others want to follow the path that you've uh, carved out. So I, just, I, I love that. It, it's amazing. And it's really such an important part of the message that we try to, uh, to convey here at NAMI New York State is that your road is your road. You can't compare yourself to anybody else or what everybody has. You got to be grateful for what you have and, and move forward and carve your own path. So I, I love that. Um, so like I said, you know, you're a real renaissance in so many ways and, and you're adding another talent to your impressive resumes. You're going to be modeling it off the mask as well. So uh, we very deeply appreciate all that you're contributing to the event, but can you discuss why raising mental health awareness is important to you? Yeah, I think the most important thing, awareness around mental health, is that we all are dealing with some form of it. We, uh, I, I'm, I'm in a different phase now. I think COVID kind of shifted the perspective inward more. Um, having to stay home and have some self-reflection time helped me understand that we're all suffering from some type of mental illness. And a lot of times it's because we didn't identify it that we don't, we don't know that. But there are things that are going on in our daily lives from birth, the environments that we're, we're brought up in that can create mental illnesses that we aren't even aware of. And I think once you take the time to reflect on that, it helps you be sensitive to the fact that th this is happening to all of us in some form or fashion, whether it's indirectly or directly. And I think the importance is to, to not feel isolated. And that's why I love being a part of this event because you can suffer from things alone a lot because you know, you're not really sharing what's happening to you and you think you're alone. So I think getting out there, being brave enough, I give everybody credit who's gonna get up there and tell their stories, being brave enough to go ahead and put that out there encourages someone who has been suffering alone with this. And it also may give, give you some relief and some peace, so. Yeah, no, and that, that's so true, right? We all are impacted by mental health challenges and, and more today than ever before. And, and we really don't want anyone to mask their feelings or, or what's going on. We got to off that mask and, and be open and, and, and talk about our feelings. If you don't mind me asking, I, I didn't send this question to you ahead of time, but in, in reading your bio, you know, you've lived an amazing life and, and, you know, coming from two separate communities that haven't always been open about talking about mental health, you were part of the military community. And I know these could, talking about these issues could also be challenging in communities of color. So I'm yeah, just yeah. interested in, in, in both your perspectives and those, you know, coming from communities where maybe mental health wasn't discussed, why it's important to, to you to kind of break down those walls. Um, I think when it comes to uh, the military experience, um, you're put in an environment where you have to adapt to it to survive. Um, you have to kind of shed a lot of your own personal values 
to to get to get through certain things that you have to go through in that environment. Um, I got I was serving um, between 99 and 2005, so I was actually serving during the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Um, it's a really trying thing for you as a human to have to turn off your emotions and turn on a sense of um, determination to carry out your duties, uh, especially when you have emotional ties to the situation. I'm a New Yorker. When the towers were, when the towers fell, it hit home. But I had to still I had a job to do right. So I think mental illness uh, for me. On that note, uh, I ended up being diagnosed with PTSD, uh, with which a lot of service members have been diagnosed with. And I think a lot of it had to do with just how traumatic it is to watch people suffer as a human being, you know, and especially if it's people you know, and, and you know, and it's your neighbors and, you know, things like that. Um, and being put in, in environments where, uh, you know, the other people are suffering too, but you're there to do a job, you know, and there to, to serve and to protect and things like that. So I don't want to get into too much detail. It's a little a touchy subject, but on the military side, I did end up with uh, PTSD from the experiences during the Iraq and um, Afghanistan wars. Um, I, I, what was the second question? I know that one was about Mental the military. And communities of color. Uh, so and as an African-American man, uh, specifically in this country, uh, I wasn't aware that I was different from anyone else um, until maybe around junior high school is when I became aware that is that I am going to be singled out in a lot of things. Um, I was aware at a young age that I, I, I shouldn't expect to not be dead or in jail by 18. Um, and I knew that young, but I didn't know it was race, a race thing. I thought it was just my environment it was, you know, I was born in, 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 in New York City. So I thought it had more to do with that. But as time went on, I realized there's a whole system that we're trying to transform where people like me are singled out. Um, and it doesn't have to do with me personally, it just has to do with the way things are in our, in our society. But with that being said, like you said, I, I, don't, I don't take on accolades, but I do agree with you that my experiences so far, the things that I've done have partially been because I, I'm, I'm driven to do it, but I'm also doing it to remind myself that I'm more than just a statistic. And excuse me, this is a little bit, little bit tough of a conversation, but um, I'm more than a statistic. So I, I just do things to remind myself of that. I'm, I'm a father of three children. I'm present, have been present since the birth of my first child. He's 23 years old now. So I think part of what we also need to do is not take on what we're being told we're supposed to be like, not take on um, the things that we see others going through as our own, you know, and, and try to create, create your own existence as much as you can um, to kind of show yourself that it doesn't have to be this way for you. Um, and yeah, just try to surround yourself with people that are encouraging you to, to be your best self. I think that's the, the key, one of the keys. Well, I love it. And, and you know, just getting to know you, I, I love you already, man. And I uh, thank you for your service and your sacrifices, of course. And, and of course, all that you're doing to better the people around you and, and create positivity. And, and, and that message that love is key, man, is, like I said, so more important than ever. And listen, you want to learn more about Loki and, and his designs and his work, he's, Right now, redoing his website, but you can visit him on Instagram at Loki, L-O-K-I Designs. That's Designs with a Z. So uh, Loki Designs with a Z at, at Instagram. And, and thank you to all of you. You know, it, it's so inspiring to me, the, the people that have, have contributed to the, this project. And, and it, there's so many elements. And, and you know, we, we take that that it takes a village mentality to help support people and create mental health, you know. We say, you know, not everyone can be a professional mental health therapist or, or, you know, counselor, but everyone can be a good friend. Everyone can be a good community member. And, and 
we all have our talents and those talents can contribute to a more uh, mentally healthy society. And, and the, all of you are the embodiment of that. And, and we can't thank you enough for all that you do every day and, and your contributions to Off the Mask. And again, if you want to meet these talented artists and our incredible models, you can join us September 10th at Off the Mask at 60 State Street in Albany starting at six o'clock. And you can find more information at NAMINYS.org and click on the Off the Mask tab. So Peggy, Mara, Loki, and, and Lauren, who's no longer with us, thank you so much again. I really, I could talk to you guys all day. I mean, each of you have such a unique perspective and, and vision. And, and uh, we're so glad we have the opportunity to share that vision with our members. And, and thank you so much. We say it thank you. At, at NAMI New York State that hope starts with you and you guys are really the embodiment of that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.